Okay, here's a riff from the middle of the first track of Intronaut's excellent Direction of Last Things. What's going on here? Basically, we have two guitar patterns happening at the same time, one in each ear. This word isn't nearly as well defined as people think, but sure, let's call it a polyrhythm. Panned hard right, is a three plus two plus three metric pattern, the same length as a fast measure of four four. And the one that's panned left has a three plus two plus two plus two plus three plus two pattern, which might be easier to think of as two measures of a fast seven eight or a single 14 eight cycle. Because these patterns are of different lengths, and both are looped exactly in this section, they'll move, or phase, relative to each other. The 14-8 cycle moves one quarter note to the left of the 4-4 cycle each time it's repeated. First, their downbeats happen at the same time. Then, the downbeat of the left guitar part hits a quarter note before the downbeat in the right guitar part, and it keeps moving like this. If you watched my last video, which was a big long introduction to Meshuggah's rhythms, this concept should be familiar. However, there's one major difference. Meshuggah's riffs will almost always last for 8 or 16 or 32, etc., measures of 4-4, and then the asymmetrical guitar riff pattern will be truncated to realign again. In this section, nothing is truncated. The patterns just continue until they line up again, which is after 7 iterations of the 4-4 pattern, which is the same as 4 iterations of the 14-8 pattern. I think a really nice thing about this is that as these patterns phase against each other, you get all these nice emergent melodies, which I think are very pretty. I'll play this composite pattern on one guitar to highlight this effect. The bass pattern, when it comes in, is the same length as the left ear 14-8 guitar pattern, but it really provides its own layer with this cool additive process going where the length of its first attack gets longer each time through. This pattern also resets at the same moment that the guitar patterns realign with each other. In the section overall, these moments of realignment are marked by changes of texture. On the second realignment, the drums and bass enter. For the next four realignments, the 7-8 guitar changes notes at the start of each cycle. And finally, at the end of the sixth cycle, we get a new section with sweet non-functional jazz chords. <laughs> Thank you. 
Pretty cool and pretty slippery for something that's theoretically straightforward. I think the key to why it's tricky to hear comes back to that 3 plus 2 plus 3 pattern in our right ear. We want to latch onto the much more familiar 3 plus 3 plus 2 tracio pattern, but if you do this, it makes it so that the realignments come on what feels like an offbeat, which can be pretty disorienting. Also, because the two patterns have the same pitches, just with different rhythms, it's harder to separate them aurally. It feels kind of like the two patterns are unpredictable echoes of each other that are continuously chasing each other in circles. I think the comparison with Meshuggah that I brought up a few minutes ago is interesting, not only because it maybe shows Meshuggah's influence in a maybe unexpected place, but more because it shows how small tweaks to a technique can give it a very different vibe. Obviously, there's a lot that's different about Intronaut's polyrhythmic phasing here. It happens between two guitars instead of between guitars and drums. The guitars are clean instead of distorted. It's in a high register instead of a down-tuned eight string, etc. But what I find super interesting is that unlike Meshuggah, Intronaut allows this pattern to continue to run without forcing a realignment. It's like they let the two equally important layers find a compromise instead of deciding in favor of one or the other. For me, a lot of Intronaut's music generally gives a kind of take it easy vibe. It's not at all easy to play, of course, and plenty of it is super heavy, but parts like this feel kind of chill. Meshuggah's music, on the other hand, is very much not take it easy. A big part of this difference has to do with the subgenre, so Intronaut is kind of progressive stoner sludge as opposed to mechanized death thrash gent Meshuggah, whatever they are, which in turn has a lot to do with timbre and texture. That is, what the guitar tones are like, what the vocals are like, what the drums are doing, etc. But I think it's cool to see that this difference, take it easy versus no take it easy, is played out at this theoretical level of how the band deals with polyrhythms. In this section, Intronaut lets them run without interfering, very take it easy, while Meshuggah almost never lets a guitar pattern go on for very long without being cut short, which feels kind of coercive if you're in an interpretive mood. Thanks for watching. See ya.